Wit Acres. I'm Cody, this is Echo, and we're gardening at home. Let's grow. Today I'll be talking about what we are putting in the cold frame this year. This is the first year for the cold frame, and I pretty much just build it for lettuces and greens. But I want to try and throw in some carrots and radishes in there because I think I have the room. And I like to experiment and see what actually I can grow. Walk you through some of the preparation for the cold frame and then we'll start picking some seeds. Tell you what I want to grow and what we are going to put in. I was going through my seed packs to try and decide what to put in my cold frame. And I noticed these two sets of greens here. The large leaf sorrel and the broadleaf batavian endive want to be sown six to eight weeks before my last frost date and I didn't know that so I'm, get, that's, I'm getting these started now I'm gonna do a dozen each it's always good to check the information on the back of your packet and my gardeners kind enough to put enough information on there so I know how to grow something like this for the first time not sure how deep to plant these but I'm gonna put a few in there scratch them into the surface plant them in like anything else I would plant with a seed this size you never want to plant the seed more than twice how thick the seed is so it's just a good rule of thumb to go off of and I'm just gonna cover these up scratch them over make sure they're making good contact with the so soil surface I don't want them sticking up this is not what I wanted to do I wanted to talk to you guys about but it's something that needed to get done today before I forget now last thing to do is throw some markers in there make sure to label so you don't forget something later and last step my mister and that's how you sow some seeds this is what I wanted to talk to you about today it's my cold frame I want to get this cold frame started and direct sewn in today so I can get some th some lettuces and greens growing. Now it is 73 in this cold frame right now. Plenty of humidity. I watered this medium yesterday just so it was nice and well saturated. Now if you build a cold frame like this, you're definitely going to want to throw a thermometer inside and keep checking that temperature and humidity just to make sure you're not getting real hot spikes when the Sun hits it mine was going up to 125 on a couple of those hot days so that'll just cook your seeds you don't want to be direct sowing when you don't know how hot and cold it's getting inside it still goes down to probably same temperature it is outside so right now we're getting about 30 to I think 26 was the temperature last night so I've been monitoring, monitoring it and I believe I'll be safe sowing some seeds in here today I need to get something to prop this thing up and I can get started the lids propped up and I have plenty of space to get in here and work I'm gonna pull this out I'll show you it is holding between 81 and 72 not bad i filled this bed with just sifted topsoil that has very heavy clay content so not the best for sowing small lettuce seeds that's why i got this bag of miracle grow moisture potting mix i'm going to spread that out on top here so i have something a little better more inviting for the seeds to be sown in and then I can pick my seeds let's do it
Alright, got dumped out. You guys fell over, but we got you back up. Try and stay standing next time. I'm going to spread this out nice and even across the surface here. Use the whole bag, which will give me about a half an inch to an inch layer across the whole top of this. Which I believe will be just about perfect. It is looking nice right now. Just trying to level it out as best I can. Now that it's looking nice and even, I can start picking out my seeds and figuring out what to sow in here. Okay, we're here in my seed room. And I got everything laid out. I already went through, picked out what I want to put in the greenhouse today, or the cold frame today. That first one's going to be a Parisian carrot. It's a smaller stubby carrot so it shouldn't have any problem growing in the cold frame with only about eight inches deep the next is a uh, radish champion another small size root vegetable that should do fine in the cold frame especially in the cold this is a cold loving green upland cress also known as winter cress it'll handle the cold very well so i want to get that started early Next is Roquette, or if you're in America, we call it Arugula. And this loves the cold and is very fast to harvest, so that's going in the cold frame. Next is a Super Red Romaine Lettuce for some color. It should be a pretty quick turnaround on those as well. Then I'll be doing Georgia Southern Collards. I haven't grown them before, and I want to try them out. After that, I'll be putting in some rainbow Swiss chard to get, a, to get an early crop of that. I've never tried it before, so it'll be interesting, especially the beautiful rainbow colors. And then last will be the Mabuno, Mabuna mustard, because I have an extra pack of that, and I messed up on my order, ordered two packs. I don't really need them, but that's okay. I'll get to try them out. So that's what's going in the cold frame this year. Let's get out there and start planting. Here I have everything laid out, planned for the cold frame here. In the back, I'm going to do a row of the Parisian carrots. Just in front of that row, I'll do a row of radish champion. And then since the Swiss chard, mustard, and collards are all larger size, I'm going to put those right through in front of the radishes. And then I'll do full rows of the cress, uh, romaine, and arugula all the way across. I think that'll fill up nice and it should give me some early harvest of some salads. Next step will be to wet down all the new potting soil I just poured in here. It's a little dry and it's very peat. Uh, it's very heavily made out of peat so it's going to be hard to saturate you don't want to be trying to saturate it once your seeds are already in there your seeds will start moving around and you have poor germination so i'm going to get a uh, watering can in here or maybe even pull the hose over and i'll just saturate this and then i can start putting in my drills and dumping some seeds in the ground make my lines That's all laid out. I'm going to get some seeds, start sprinkling them in.
It said I'm using the Parisian carrot because it does not have a long tap root as opposed to some of the other carrots. And I'm just gonna take some in my hand Take a pinch out of my palm, start sprinkling them in. Carrots don't like to dry out, so make sure you keep your moisture as these are trying to germinate. Some of these can fall in a little bit too deep, so sew them thick and thin them later. So I've never grown carrots in a cold frame before. I've never grown anything in a cold frame before. This is all new and I'm glad you guys get to follow along with me and try something new. Pat the soil and backfill. Not actually covering them directly up, I'm just patting the soil to make sure they're making good contact with it. Some of them I'm sure did fall too deep, but that's why I sewed extra. Done deal. All right, time for the radishes. Radishes will be about the same thing. They're a bit larger seed, which is nice. And I got one of the old cheap packs, so it's paper and they get stuck. I carefully open the package. Don't lose some seeds. Now these seeds are from 2017, so I'll probably just throw them all in there and hopefully they'll germinate. We only can trust seeds for about up to two years. Once you hit the third or fourth year, I feel the germination is definitely going down. Some flower seeds and weed seeds definitely can go a lot longer than that, but for your vegetables, I'd keep them, try and keep them as fresh as you can. A lot of radishes. I might actually put some right behind the greens as well. I don't want to sow them too densely. Okay, now we're going to tap those down just the same. Remove the soil a little bit, make sure they fall in underneath. And make sure each seed has good soil contact so it can sprout. Okay, next up, Swiss chard. Now Swiss chard could be started indoors three to four weeks before your last frost which I probably will start some of these for my main garden. But to try and get an early frost, I'm gonna be sowing them in the cold frame right now, which is only about six weeks before my last frost, I think. I think I'm somewhere around six weeks. So I'm doing about a uh, foot row of these. So I'm just gonna put in maybe 10 at the most. six or eight, something like that. And then I'm gonna backfill over these. I want these to be actually under the soil surface. Okay. That is the rainbow Swiss chard. Now that's gonna be 18 or 24 inches tall, which is gonna be pushing up on my cold frame, but I'll be harvesting these as they grow, so they shouldn't actually get any bigger than a baby leaf. Next one we have here is the Mabuna Mustard. This should be ready in about 40 days. But like I said, I'll be harvesting baby leaves. So they shouldn't get too big. That's way too many. I'm going to put 8 to 10 seeds. I'm going to put them in this little trench here. Just sprinkle them out. I'll be thinning these later. But sowing early like this. And in a new situation with the cold frame that I haven't done before, I like to put some more seeds in there because you're definitely going to have some not germinate. Seeds also take a lot longer to germinate in the cold. They can end up rotting in there if you keep them too wet. Put in some extras and you probably won't be disappointed. Last for the bigger greens will be the Georgia Southern Collards. These will reach another pretty sizable height for a green. So I'm putting it in the back row 
of the salad greens. And I'm gonna sow about maybe eight to 15 of these for the same reason. They're about a half inch spacing, if anything. And before I go in any farther, I'm gonna get these marked. All right, I got my tags written out. And I believe I still remember where I planted things, so. All right, everything's marked. I didn't want to forget. I started getting about halfway across and then I was thinking I might lose these things. So I got them marked now. Kill that bug. And now I can finish planting. This is Rockette. It's an heirloom. We call it arugula here. You gotta be careful when you're opening these seed packs because they don't like to open. They shred. You gotta get a knife and open them like a letter. But don't open them over your seeding area because you can easily dump a bunch of seeds where you don't want them. So open them over to the side don't have a big mistake okay so I'm gonna pour some of these out sprinkle them in just the same these should be about a quarter inch deep so I don't want to fall I don't want to fall in too deep so I'm gonna pat this down so I have a solid surface to put the seeds on I'm gonna sew these pretty tight because I'm gonna just be harvesting them for leaves they don't need full spacing so I'm gonna sew them about a quarter inch And sew them in nice and tight. Pretty sure I just dropped some. So be careful if you're doing this. Don't make a mess. Take your time. Just sew them in. on the front end I'm gonna do upland cress. I believe this will stay pretty low four to six inches even if I don't harvest it so that's why it's getting the front zone here. So you want to be careful when you pop these seeds open. You can I don't know if you can see that but there's a seed right there in the sticky part flap and that can fall anywhere and start growing. You don't want that to happen. Get some of these and I'll pinch them out just like the rest. Try and keep them nice and tight. I'll just tap those in just the same as everything else. Try and keep gardening simple. I don't need to go all particular on quarter inch here, eighth inch here. Just keep everything nice and tight. Here we are. Doesn't look like much right now, but I got the plant tags in. Try and mark my rows. Got all those sewn, and they should be popping up here in the next week or two. It's really exciting, can't wait. I'm gonna leave this door open like this. Like that, I'm gonna leave this open because I just watered that peat and I don't want this getting too soggy and wet because those seeds will just rot in place if I keep them too wet. Now that I got all these sewn in here, I'm thinking I should have some spinach in here. I'm gonna go grab some spinach and get this sewn in. Back in with all my seeds. I need spinach. Let's go with a salad sensation hybrid. What do you think? So I grabbed my spinach seeds and I think I'm just gonna throw one right back here. I don't need a row of spinach. Just need a few seeds. And I'm gonna drop them in there. About five seeds are going in, maybe six. Backfill them, cover them up. Not even going to label it. It would just be a nice little 
spinach surprise there once everything starts germinating. And throw my thermometer back inside. It says it's 77 out here right now in the sun. And like I said, I'm gonna leave this go until probably about, I don't know, five or six o'clock tonight. As the temperature starts dropping. I'll close this up and it can sit for the night so I have something a little bit warmer to germinate in. All right, that's the cold frame sewn in for this 2021 season. I'm real happy to get this cold frame sewn. I wanted to do it a little bit earlier, but I think this is early enough with the way the weather's been looking. It's still going to be a little cold and dropping into freezing temps all through March now. So I got this sewn and hopefully I can get something growing before I would otherwise out into my open raised bed. Quick little update here in the rose bed. Got a bunch of hyacinths popping up. A couple of them already showing their color. Got a blue jacket right there. Got a nice deep red one right there. The whole bed's really just filling up with hyacinths. Beautiful. Got the daffodils on the end. This is gonna be a real nice fragrant, beautiful bed here in the spring. One more thing before you go. This cold frame will need to be propped open and closed during the day. So what I wanted to do was get an automatic window opener like I got for my greenhouse, something like this, that will open, open and close as it heats up. But I think I got the wrong type for my cold frame because this is gonna go in like this, but there's a cylinder that sticks out, a wax cylinder that sticks out this direction. And I'm gonna need to modify it somehow or get a different one but these come really in handy when you have a cold frame or a greenhouse and you're not home all the time to watch it even if you are these get it before you do so these are definitely something good to invest in see me on the next one